So we find ourselves working again on the 1954 International chassis swap, and I did some things, so let me bring you guys in. So first and foremost, we cleared up all the wiring, steering wheel, all the stuff that's been in here the entire time, so we can kind of really take a look at how our floor came out. I'm quite happy. It's actually pretty set up very well. We still got to add cross brace into all this, but that's not why we're in here today. Let me hop in. So when we designed this truck, we designed it with in mind, can we lower it the most we can without modifying the suspension right out of the get-go? And we accomplished that, but in order to do that, we recessed the cab quite far into this truck. And that meaning, as you can see, our crimson step, it's not a big deal because as I sit right now, it's actually quite a nice, comfortable steering position and everything. But these cabs, usually they would have a seat. You would be sitting on the cushion, but there would be, I don't know, the floor would be like right here. Take note of my seat in position as it is right now. Here's the seat in arrangement with a stock type seat. Granted, I could modify this slightly, but this is kind of how you would end up sitting in the truck if it was set up with this way. It's not that bad because we have the excess headroom here, but with a helmet and stuff, if I ever add a headliner to this, we're gonna run into some issues. So basically, we gotta make it so the seat where it mounts is as low as possible. Plus, when the steering wheel's here, I'll be right up into my knees, and that's not exactly good. Here's a little bit more of a visual for you guys. So as you can see, there's our dash, and the dash line comes right up to here on the seat. And for reference, this is about two Subway sandwiches high off the, uh, off the current floor. So the seat rides a little bit too tall for our cab. Option one, the most work involved, is where the seats go. I can afford two on this side, that side's a different deal. We can drop the floor just where the seats are, bring them farther into the truck, not a huge, huge deal, but it's gonna cost us a lot of fab work down the road. So I don't really wanna do that. Option two is we basically take the cushions off this, plate it with steel and make like a, a bomber seat type deal out of the old seat bones, if you know what I mean. Not really something I wanna go into because we might be able to save the cushions off these for something else, whatever, whatever. Option three, being the most expensive option out of them all, is we go out and buy a couple of Kirkley brand race seats. I'll put a picture of them right up uh, above there. They sit pretty flush. They're usually made out of plate aluminum. They're made for racing at the end of the day, which is cool, which is good. Four wheel slicks and all on this truck is gonna be pretty neat, but they're expensive. You're talking about $500, $600 per seat and we still gotta get tires and wheels and buy lots of steel. So I don't think we're gonna do that. So that leaves us with a fourth option and I'll show you what we're gonna get into. Here's a hint. It's gonna be DIY bomber seats. Welcome to High Hill Stable Garage. What we ended up doing, I can make one bomber seat right now and we can use that kind of as a control on how this whole thing's gonna go. But I have it laid out here. We're gonna use basically a template that will fit in all three positions because I plan on making a third middle seat. So it's the smaller ones. We're gonna go basically with a full on race seat for driver and then two half seats basically for the middle and the passenger. So this is gonna be used as a driver seat for right now, but later on we'll likely make a more custom built seat for the driver side. But let me bring you guys in. It's a plan that I found online. I'm gonna put the author up right now on the top of the screen and the original plans up right now on the top of the screen. But I'll show you my little tweaks that I made to this and then we're gonna start working and making this thing come out. So let's get at that. So this is the plans that I kind of rug up there. It's a twist off the original design, but I made some small increment changes. Hopefully it doesn't affect the whole thing, but it will help because, you know, we don't all weigh 120 pounds. So I wanted to 
beef this guy up a little bit. So first things first, this is supposed to be made out of aluminum, but we're using 16 gauge steel, that's okay. That's the general layout. We're gonna hole saw these out, or plasma, whatever. Cut this out, this main shape, and then we're simply gonna bend these up on the corners, and then either do a butt weld, a lap weld, or a couple of rivets here and there. It's just a cheap DIY setup to make in a seat. Again, I'll put up the original plans up above, and that's kind of what we're basing this off of. But I'm gonna cut this guy out, and then I'll see you guys at the shop. All right, so we got the general profile all cut out there. We're in the big shop, as you guys can see. The first things first that we're gonna do, we're gonna plasma out these two holes right here because when we bend them, they need to basically be able to bend on these axes and it's gonna be super easy to cut these out right now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it doesn't look like much right now, but that's roughly what we're kind of going for. Kind of give you a side profile on that. Again, this is 16 gauge sheet steel that we're doing this in. The original plans call for basically aluminum. I'll show you the aluminum pretty much. Calls for aluminum about that thick. I'd say that's like eighth and an inch, something like that. But sheet steel is gonna work fine because we're gonna rib this across and we're gonna add actually some dimple dies all throughout it. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go get some vice grips, tack these on, and we're basically gonna be doing a couple of quick tacks and then a cut and butt on both of those. And then we're gonna be taking a piece of steel and rolling the piece of steel across all of our finished edge. And then likely some dimple dies. So just hold on, let me get that all set up and let's get rocking.
right, so that's roughly what we're going for. We got the outer edge all tacked on, the inner edge is all tacked on. That right there is where you sit. So now, let's try to make some dimple dies. I'm thinking one or two here. I'm thinking one or two right here. One or two right here, maybe a couple down the center. Add a little bit of strength to it. So let's go see what we can do. All right, so it's next day here. We had to move it on there. We were burning too much midnight oil. So today, what we're gonna do is basically finish well the seat all around. It's basically all tacked. And then we gotta do a little bit of grinding here and there. Take out a little bit of the uh, the penetration that we had on the other welder. We're gonna finish it up with our flux core, grind it all down, smooth it all out, and I'll show you guys the finished product. But yeah, let's get into it. We got the seat all finish welded. Everywhere it's finish welded up on this. So now what we have to do is wire wheel the entire thing. That way we can see our high spots and all that stuff and we can grind those down. That's what it kind of looks like before wire wheeling. So let me start doing that. All right, so that's it all wire wheeled down. As you can see, there's a little bit of stuff, but we removed all the sugar in, which is good. So now we're gonna just simply flap this guy off and I'll bring you guys back when it's all flapped up. So there you go. There's our seat, basically. We only ground down the little buttons that were kind of poking out at you, so you would feel them through your butt. Those are gone. The rest, we're just kind of leaving rough. Eventually, we'll make a seat cover for this, and it will hide the entire thing, but I kind of like just the solid steel look. We might paint it black, I'm not quite sure. But let's go see how it looks in the truck. So there you go guys, 
that's kind of roughly how it's going to look like sitting in the back seat just kind of like this it's going to be up just a touch more tall just because we got to make our mounts but that's not a huge deal let me hop in and let's see what it looks like it's not bad at all it, it hugs you pretty good it'll likely be when i mount it a little bit more forward something kind of like this and maybe just tilt it back just a touch but it's actually quite comfortable i'm honestly quite surprised that there's no padding in it but we were going for height and i'm basically sitting right where i need to be which is fantastic we're not gonna solid mount this seat just yet because we need to know where we're gonna put our steering wheel that's the next big thing all said and done we have about 85 dollars into this seat and you can't go wrong with that i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one very very soon all right see ya